Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I'll be taking a look at the book What Awaits Them by Liam Cobb, and this is from Breakdown Press. This is a collection of a bunch of short Liam Cobb stories, and uh, one of these stories I've already read, I've already got in its original like one-off format, which is bigger and Rizo printed, and it's interesting to compare to this because it looks like each one of these projects were originally printed as a risograph first and then here to have them all together you're going to have different colors and stuff so it has to be printed in a four color process and it's really really beautifully produced book um, but it's interesting to compare them as well because obviously it's a different production method and so when art's prepared for one method and then it has to be put put together in another method it's an interesting thing to compare but really awesome book um, a whole bunch of different short stories. Here you can see just some of the quality of the art just in these closing pages. So I'm just going to show you a little bit from each one. This is the Fever Closing. And you have the Michelin Man character, which is in the other book that I've already reviewed that's collected in this book as well. Uh, here you have a character dressing in a Mis Michelin Man suit. Uh, one of the themes that seems pretty consistent throughout all the stories is like jungles, people being lost in jungles, people going into jungles, and there's always these backgrounds. Here you can see all this beautiful color work that you, that you can understand if it was in a risograph, it would be like these color inks in particular. Um, I think in this book it is done with a for typical CMYK process, but I, I could be wrong. It's it's hard to tell. It definitely looks half-toned rather than the the uh, stochastic screening that you get typically with the risograph, but I could be wrong. Maybe they printed each one individually as a risograph. I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's a little bit hard to tell too because a lot of the work has like a pencil-y, ink washy quality to it, and that prints very well, so that, that may be uh, yeah, I'm not sure. This is the second story called Green Graves. This is, again, a story about people looking some, for something in a jungle, and the they're kind of not trusting the guides, and things go wrong. And there's just some absolutely brutal scenes here where it all goes down. There's a lot of brutality in this book as well. It seems to be another theme throughout. But intense guy getting shot in the eye, people stabbing each other, a lot of awesome textural work. Um, really like Liam Cobb's style and stylistic variety as well. There's a bit of Olivier Schrauen in some of this stuff, if I'm pronouncing the artist's name right. This seems like some of the stuff I've seen from him, but then there's other stuff that seems totally unrelated to that. This is a piece, another story called Adapting Walls, and it seems like it's about a building or a set of buildings that eats the people that come into it. Uh, you can see the really like intense detailing going on in all of these. And again, the really intense use of like sp spot colors coming together to make uh, really peculiar and particular colors. Um, so more of like a horror story, but again, like kind of brutal and still having this sense of, of people being lost. And that's where the title, like what awaits them, seems to be thematically relevant to all of the stories. It's not just like what awaits them and other stories. Uh, it seems to be, besides the last one, um, the very last one, it seems to be like a pretty common core of people being lost somewhere, and uh, it's kind of a horrific thing. This one is called Slow Drift. Again, it's a really, really brutal story, and it's all about people kind of arguing over a horse, whose horse is what. Uh, again, the really cool, like, abstract images here with the the nature I think is the most appealing part of this one. This one though um, does not reproduce well. It's it's reproduced at such a big dot rate that I can actually see the dots like I mean from far away I can see the dots making the panel borders so I don't know if this is like having to translate like a scan of a risograph print or if that's something that was done on purpose for like a textural quality in this story. But it's strange because the other ones don't have that. Uh, but again, like seeing through that, you see a lot of beautiful art. And again, a really intense, brutal story that I don't want to give away because I definitely think you should go out and get this book. It's a great collection of stories. This story here, again, is it's called Two Men in, in the Jungle, in a Jungle. 
And uh, again, two people lost in the jungle, they're kind of struggling and then they eat this fruit and you get just this really trippy sequence here. But I love, again, this looks like, you know, ink on top of ink type of thing where the, the, the ink's not trapped. And so you get the color showing through of like the blue coming through the red. I think, again, that this is simulated. It's not actually there like it would be in the risograph, but it's a really beautiful look and it's simulated really well. And then here you get a sense of how that's being used purposely in the art to show these two characters like coming together, their colors overlapping and merging, and then some really beautiful effects here. So real sensitivity to production and production as a way of actually making the art that the way you combine the inks actually has some impact on the visual and some impact on the story. Uh, that's just really smart. That's that's where we're at in terms of the industry, I think, right now, or the capabilities of the medium is that production is part of it. And so we need to think about it. And then this one is the one that I've reviewed somewhere else. I think it was in one of my grab bag videos from um, partners and sons they sent me along that's the first time I saw Liam Cobb's name and comparing this to that there definitely seems to be like more fidelity to the colors and stuff in that original print I'm not going to compare them because it won't show up on screen but this is where I think okay this has been reshot for half tones in a four color process somehow but I, I could be wrong because there's still a real like um phosphorescent luminosity to the color that you get with the, the risograph. So I'm not sure, but this one seems a little bit off theme from the other ones. You basically have a bizarre story where you get some real facts about the Michelin star rating system for restaurants. And they that's laid out in the story here. A one star restaurant meant a worth was a restaurant was worth a stop en route. Two stars meant it was worth a detour, and three stars meant it was worth a special visit. There are only 120 inspectors worldwide, and every inspector is anonymous. So I think that's all facts, and if I remember correct, I looked that up um, before recording the other video, and that's facts. But then what you get is this character that's supposedly an anonymous like person who's going through and raiding the restaurants. But you understand in the story just kind of implicitly that everyone knows like, hey, we know you're the critic coming in. And so they're all trying to show him their fanciest, wildest dishes. And then you just go down this like whole kind of train of absurd dishes, which is really, really funny. And then um, here you get like this character has gone to see the last place that he's booked for the year and he gets offered a very very special dish and i don't want to show what it is because it's a big kind of like uh, i don't know i don't want to give spoilers on the ending of it because it's pretty intense uh but yeah this this one still has that quality of like someone stumbling into something getting stranger and more horrific as it goes but it doesn't quite have the same vibe as the other one. There still is that sense of like impending doom and exploration throughout. And I think that's the core theme of the book. It's really interesting to see so many different short stories with so many kind of different art styles and production tricks and all of that going on, but having a common theme throughout. I really like when there seems to be something that an artist is chewing on. So I'm really curious to see whatever comes next from Liam Cobb because this is a collection of what's been done until now, I think. I don't know if there's any long form works or if this is like a complete collection. If anyone else knows, I would I would love to know, but this is a collection of comics made between 2016 and 2018. So whatever has been done since then, I'm really curious about any longer form works. I'm really curious about, uh, cause it's an artist that seems to have a very particular thing and a good variety of approaches to addressing that thing. And that's always exciting to me. So definitely go get yourself a copy of What Awaits Them by Liam Cobb from Breakdown Press. Centralia is an awesome, gorgeous uh, comic by rising Dutch star, Neil Vanapiet. This is his first work. It's a really great sci-fi story. There's a world in the future where the sun has gotten so hot that people can't be on the ground. Uh, so they have to run around. There's a lot of conceits that go with that. You know, what is the world that that looks like? Um, and I think you can see by the art that Sean's description of this book as like a Moebius for young adults. A YA Moebius is a really great.
great description of this really gorgeous and like wild wacky fun book make sure to like smash that subscribe button and ring that bell